Hello, hello. 2 wo 96 in the building. It's been a long, long time, y'all. You all, long time. It has been a very long time since I have created a video. In fact, it's been a very long time since I've created a video related to Cartoon Network. In fact, if you go look at my YouTube uploads in the past five years, it's mainly been gaming stuff, mainly a couple racing games I've uploaded. But uh, as far as Cartoon Network goes, you got to go back to 2017, I think, since the last time I've uploaded anything Cartoon Network related. But anyways, you know, I had to make a video on this because all month long, everyone has been celebrating the 30th anniversary of Cartoon Network and I haven't really made a commentary video on Cartoon Network in many, many years on my YouTube channel. In fact, the video is not even uploaded anymore. I deleted it. So, um, so today I'm gonna do do a, a tier list on all the Cartoon Network shows over the years. But before I get to that, I want to give my brief thoughts on the um, Cartoon Network Studios and Warner Brothers um, merger. That's that that's been happening this month or has already happened i'm not sure but anyways honestly i'm gonna make this very short but i'm not gonna make a big deal about it because i mean to be honest cartoon network studios has not been good for the past like five years or more anyway like i mean if you look at the last several original shows that's been on and don't get me wrong i haven't kept up with the network in years at this point i mean the last shows I watched was like the Adventure Time regular show, Steven Universe era, which was back in like 2010 up till 2015 or 16. So like it's been a while. It's been some years since I last watched the network anyway. But I, I do know that in recent years, you've had so many reboots like Teen Titans Go, Ben 10 reboot. Uh, you have the Powerpuff Girls 2016 reboot. And some uh, Thundercats Roar reboot and other Toll Drama Rama, so many other reboots on the network. And so the network just hasn't been doing well lately because it's just mainly been reboots and hardly any original, fresh creativity. So, you know, the network's been suffering. So people say that Cartoon Network died because Cartoon Network Studios merged. But no, Cartoon Network Studios has been dead for a while now. So, like, to me, I don't think. The studios merging together means the network's dead because to, to me it's either still alive because they're trying to like i guess they're trying to like they hope that like merging the studio merging cartoon network studios with warner bros together firing all those people hopefully that gets the network back on track maybe it's going to help the network in the long run because the network has been dead the last several years if you look at all the recent shows that's been on the air so but anyways, uh, yeah, just getting that out of the way. I, like I said, I think, honestly, I hope Cartoon Network Studios merging with Warner Bros. brings the network back to life. Because, I, honestly, in my opinion, the network's been dead for years because of the reboots that's been going on the last several years. Just marathoning all these reboots and stuff and just... Again, Adventure Time and regular shows been ended now. It's just it, it, the network's just been it's just been a dumpster fire, in my opinion. The last uh, the last five years at minimum, for sure. It ju it just hasn't been doing that well. Like, cause you think about it, that era of Adventure Time, regular show, Gumball, Steven Universe, Young Justice, Symbiotic Titan. What else? I mean, Clarence and so forth. Generator Rex, so much more. That was the 20 teens era of Cartoon Network that we remember. Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. Uh, that 20 teens era, that is the last great era of CN that we remember in recent years. And that era, and it's hard to believe that era's been 10 years ago now because that was the early 2010s, the early to mid 2010s era of Cartoon Network. That was the last great era we've had. Since then, we have not had a good era of the network because it's just mainly been reboots and so forth. So, but anyways, 
that with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this tier list here of all of my favorite Cartoon Network shows that I grew up with. And and check this out. I'm going to be very opinion opinionated about this list, y'all. So hear me out. Y'all may not agree with all my opinions on this, and that's fine. But hey, for the 30th anniversary, I think it's only right that I make a video on this. And you tell me if you agree with this list or not. Okay, so... So, but just a heads up before we get started on this tier list, there are some rules. So obviously there's been a lot of, while CN has had its original programming, there's also been a lot of acquired shows all over the years. In fact, when the network first started back in 92 and for a while through 95, 96, 97, there was mostly hand Barbera shows on the air and not that many originals you really didn't start getting more originals on the network until the the end of the 90s to the early 2000s and so forth and, and, and onwards so but yeah the main focus is going to be cartoon network original series so like anything that's not a cartoon network original will not be on this list so as much as i love maybe the flintstones or dragon ball z or totally spies or uh Mucha Lucha, other acquired shows that's been on the network, those will not be on this list because those are not originals. Now, there is an exception. There are some exceptions to the rule, obviously. Warner Bros. shows that premiered new episodes on Cards Network like Teen Titans or Justice League Unlimited, that's fine. Those are fine. Young Justice, that's fine. Because Warner Bros. has... Warner Bros. cartoons has been a... was a huge defying moment of Cartoon Network's history, just like the original Teen Titans, so that's fine. That's why Cartoon Network Studios is merging with Warner Bros. It makes sense, so, hey. But yeah, Cartoon Network original series and Warner Bros. shows that premiere new episodes on the network will, will be on this tier list. And I think Total Drama Island's the only Canadian series that I'm okay with putting on this tier list because that's another that's another exception that was a big factor in the network's history so with that out of the way let's get started so um i have my list i have my list right here so um here we go so we're gonna start with we're gonna go in abc order so we're gonna start with adventure time so adventure time I'm gonna rank this as an A. I think it gets a solid A. Adventure Time, again, it, it's the series that kickstarted the 2010s era. It really got CN out of that little rut that it was in back in the late 2000s with CN Reels. It, that's what Adventure Time is remembered for. Adventure Time, it set the bar for the 2010s era of Cartoon Network. So it gets an A. There were some seasons of Adventure Time that I didn't was a big fan of but most of the series was one of the best of all time all right you all so uh I, this was obviously this video was pre-recorded but uh i accidentally left out a few shows on accident so first one i left out was amazing world of gumball but that i just added in there so it could be an abc order but uh yeah amazing world of gumball i would rank as as solid b personally i'm gonna make this brief but yeah it wasn't really my cup of tea but it was still a, a good series i think so i think gumball gets a, a solid b and then here goes apple and onion what is this i don't know what apple and onion is i never watched it i don't really care batman Bra batman the brave and the bold i'm gonna give this a solid a and look it may not be like Batman the Animated Series, but but you know what? I really like the old references. I feel like this Batman series was based off the really, really old comics, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't watch it, watch it much, but Batman Brave and the Bolt had some really, really, really good episodes. And it was an underrated series, too. So, I really liked Batman Brave and the Bolt, so that gets, that gets a solid A. Um, Benton, the original... OG Benton S tier, one of the best Cartoon Network shows of all time. Obviously, this was one of this was probably top two best original series that premiered during the City era of Cartoon Network, along with Foster's Home. Obviously, Benton gets an S. The OG Alien Force, I would give a solid A. 
Omniverse, now, I, I know a lot of people hated Omniverse mainly because of the animation, but with the exception of the animation, it was still a really good series. I would give it a B. I would have ranked it in A had it had had it had better animation, but because the animation because of the animation was a step down from the previous Benton series, I'll drop it to a B. But Omniverse is still really good. And then there's Ultimate Alien. Ultimate Alien gets an S. I think Benton Ultimate Alien was just as phenomenal. And what what else can I say? I mean, those were the good Ben 10 series that we all know of. And then obviously the Ben 10 reboot from 2017, it gets a D. It it it, it, it was not a good series at all. It was trash. So Camp Laszlo. Now I had to think this one through. But honestly, it's really a tough one with Camp Lasso. For me, it's between A or B. I would give it... I think it gets a solid B. I, I don't think it was great, but it was really, really good. I think, honestly, of the B tier rankings, I think it's the top one. But it's right on the cusp of A and B for me. But I would still rank it as a B. But Camp Lasso was really good. I really liked it. Chowder, solid A. Child, Chowder was an amazing Cartoon Network series, hands down. I, I love Chowder. The characters and the writing was excellent on there. Chowder came out in 2007, I believe. So, yeah, Chowder was amazing. Clarence, see, yeah, I never watched Clarence, unfortunately. I Sorry, y'all. I, I it, it was probably a really good series, but I never watched it, so I can't say much on it. Class of 3000, um, oh, yes. Class of 3000 based off the um, one of the out one of the group from the outcast um, class of uh, class of 3000 gets a solid B I, I, I didn't watch it that much but I think most of the episodes I watch I enjoyed I don't know if I would consider it as a great series but but it, it it gets a solid. It's in the middle tier for me because again I didn't watch it that much, but I did like it, like what I saw from it. But it it was a good series. Code name Kids Next Door, and oh boy, this one gets an S. One of the greatest series ever created. I, I y'all y'all know how it is. Like this was an emotional series, especially towards the end that last episode it really got to me big time but uh yeah the roster of characters the missions they went on the writing was great you know you, you you know oh man you know we all had to become a, an adult one day anyways but you know it, it it was an amazing time especially as a kid watching this series and you could relate to it and everything with everyone being kids and stuff kids next door Amazing series. It gets an S. I, it, it's one of the greatest Carson Network series for me. Courage, the Cowardly Dog gets a solid S. It, it, it was one of the greatest Carson cartoons ever created. In fact, of the early Carson cartoons, I think it was the best one. I really do. Like, like it was creepy, obviously. It, there are a lot of really, really creepy, terrifying episodes, but the writing was great. The way they did Courage and all the other, Mario and the other characters and stuff, it was fantastic. So Courage gets a solid S. Cow and Chicken, one of the very early Cartoon Network original series from the Cartoon Cartoons era. But Cow and Chicken gets to see. It's mediocre. It doesn't hold up today. It, it, it was just, uh, people say it was a Ren and Stip stippy knockoff or ripoff and honestly i don't blame anyone for saying that i personally did not like um i personally didn't like cow and chicken that much now i liked watching it when i was younger but looking back at it it wasn't that great of a series i think it was mediocre not completely bad but it was mediocre it had its moments don't get me wrong obviously the uh, devil guy was hilarious and everything and there was some really really crazy jokes in there but cow and chicken is is mediocre Craig and creek unfortunately never watched 
Dexter's Laboratory, one of my favorite Cartoon Network series of all time. But Dexter's Laboratory, the way I look at this series, and, and obviously the creator of this series was Gennady Terry Koski. I cannot pronounce his last name, but again, I'll just say Gennady. But yeah, uh, Dexter's Lab is a solid A. I wouldn't rank it as an S because I don't think it was that great of a series enough to be S, but it gets a solid A. I think, I think, um, if I'm going to be honest, I think seasons one and two up to Eagle Trip w was the height of the series from 1996 to 1999. But when seasons three and four came back in 2001, 02, and 03, I did not like those seasons of Dexter's Lab. I think the last two seasons were just not that good when the voice actors change and the animation change. I, I, I did not like the last two seasons of Dexter's Lab, so I can't rank it as an S, but it, it's a solid A. And even then, even if it was just the first two seasons up to Ego Trip, I still think the series gets a solid A. Duck Dodgers, this is a another excellent series. Duck Dodgers was one of my all-time favorite Looney Tunes series, or series based off the Looney Tunes. Duck Dodgers gets an A for me, so... Yeah. Ed and Eddie, what do I have to say, y'all? You know, y'all know I'm going to put this at S. Come on now. I got to put this as an S. It was, it was pretty goofy at times, the animation and everything. But once you get past the animation and the goofiness, you'll realize that the writing was excellent. Whether it was the episodes around the cul-de-sac or the episodes when they were in school, I liked all of it. Longest running Carson Network series uh, lasted for 10, se 10 years. Although I don't think like there were like a bunch of episodes all the 10 years, but it still lasted till 2009. So the big picture show was a great way to end the series and it was emotional too. I also really liked the Christmas special for Ed and Eddie as well, but so many great characters on Ed and Eddie. Obviously, Double D was my favorite character and uh. You got Plank, you got the Cranker Sisters. I hated them. But, uh, yeah, Ed and A was an amazing series. It definitely gets an S. Evil Kung Carney, okay, we're going to get to Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy in a second when we get down the list because we're going in ABC order. But Evil Kung Carney gets, uh, it gets a B. And it's really underrated. I mean, honestly... I actually wish this series would have lasted longer. I didn't watch as many episodes of this as Billy and Mandy, but I don't think it's an A because it did have some strange moments in the series that made me go, what? But, hey, you know, I, I like a more mature series. Like, this is one of those Cartoon Network shows. It wasn't centered around kids like Billy and Mandy was. Like, it was centered around adults. Like, and... Yeah, it was still on the kids network. And I and I like it when Cartoon Network comes up with series like this. Evil Kong Carney was one of those. Now, in spite of that, I still would rank it as a B. So but it it was a it was a decent series. Uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Solid A. This was another this was also this was created by Crab McCracken, the same creator of Powerpuff Girls, which we will get to later on. This one gets an A. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends won some awards, too, and everything. This was definitely one of the greatest series in Cartoon Network's history. This is the main Cartoon Network original series that kick-started the city era. So, like, you know, like I said, Adventure Time kick-started the 20 teens era, but Foster's Home kick-started that mid-2000s era of Cartoon Network in the city era. So, Foster's Home had a really amazing roster of characters and everything. I loved it. Gets a solid A. Generator Rex, I never watch, unfortunately, so I can't really rank, say much on it. But I know it was a really good series, but I personally never watched it, but I know it was great. And same with Green Lantern, unfortunately, I never watched it. And now we get to Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. This series by Maxwell Adams gets an S tier. I mean, where do I begin, y'all? Like, the writing, <laughs> Billy, Mandy, Grimm, and all the other characters. It did have some 
really it had some real it was a mix of perfect writing darkness and gross moments done right like what can i and the animation was fantastic especially by the time it separated from grim and evil billy and mandy gets an s it, it's one of the greatest cartoon ever series of all time this along with code name kids that store and ed and eddie were the top original series for me so hi hi puffy amy yumi so hi hi puffy amy yumi not one of my favorite series but i would rank that as a solid b as well so hi hi puffy amy yumi it was pretty it did have some creative moments don't get, it did it was pretty creative but i would still rank it as a b and now we get to iron weasel same as cow and chicken to me gets a mediocre i didn't like it much and honestly actually i really did like iron weasel as i was watching it. i prefer cow chicken over iron weasel but i still didn't like either of those as much so i'm sorry iron weasel gets a c for me infinity train i never watched and i've heard great things about it, but i've never watched it. i think infinity train was is on hbo max i think most of the episodes are on there anyway Johnny Bravo. Now, Johnny Bravo, another classic C and original series. Johnny Bravo, the first season done by Van. Van I think his name is Van Partible or something like that. And then I think he did the first season and the last season, but he didn't do the middle seasons. I really liked the first season of Johnny Bravo. And I think the last season of Johnny Bravo had some underrated moments. I really liked the writing of the first and the last seasons of Johnny Bravo. Like the first season was the best for sure. But the middle seasons of Johnny Bravo were just not that great in my opinion. I don't like how Johnny is dumbed down so much. And Carl, I find him to be really annoying as well. So looking back, Johnny Bravo was in, and one thing about Johnny Bravo, it was another one of those Cartoon Network series that was more on the mature side. like. And obviously, the stuff that was in Johnny Bravo back then would never make it to today's society. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Personally, I like Johnny Bravo. Specifically, the first and last seasons. But the second and third season, or whatever the middle seasons were, not so much looking back. So, I have to give this one a B. I have to give this one a B. Because it, it it was not a great series to me. It was a really good Cartoon Network show. Don't but don't get me wrong. But I don't think it was that great. So, but pretty good. Justice League, S tier. Oh yes, the Mar the uh, DC anime. This to me, the DC anime universe start with Batman the anime series and Superman the anime series and onwards. Batman Beyond and onwards. But to me, Justice League was the peak of the DC animated universe. This was like the height of it. This gets an S. This gets an S. And then Justice League Unlimited, a slight step down from Justice League, but still a great series overall. So I, this gets an A. Crypto the Super Dog. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I liked Crypto the Super Dog as it aired because it was kind of like a light-hearted show and everything. And it was cool to see all the dogs have the different superhero costumes on and everything and everything but looking back at crypto the super dog honestly i think it was a mediocre series i think it was mediocre i don't think i could watch that again it, it just was not it, it, it's just not my cup of tea personally i think i think it's mediocre now it wasn't a completely bad series but i don't think it was that good the life and times of jennifer lee Another strange one here. Another strange one that premiered during the city era of Cartoon Network. And uh, yeah, the life and times of Jennifer Lee often gets compared to Danny Phantom and American Dragon Jake Long. It always has been compared to that. Now, personally, of the three, I think Danny Phantom was the best. And then. American Dragon, what's strange to me is that, and I know I'm kind of going off topic, so I won't get to that. This is about Cartoon Network's 30th anniversary. This is why we're ranking these shows, but uh, yeah. 
the life and times of Jim Perley, I would rate this as a C personally. And look, I, I'll be honest, I didn't watch as much, but from the episodes I did see, I just couldn't really get into it personally. Now, for those who thought it was a good series, hey, I respect that because I don't think it was a completely bad series, but I think it, I think it's one of the higher C's, one of the higher mediocres, but still not that good. The Looney Tunes show, also a C. Kind of a shame that this is on this list, but not the OG Looney Tunes. But, uh, yeah, the Looney Tunes show, another mediocre series. I could not click with – this series did not click with me. I I tried my best to get into it, y'all. I just couldn't get into the Looney Tunes show. Mediocre. And now we get to Mad. Now, I'll be honest with you all. Mad – I know a lot of people did not like Matt and you know why people didn't like Matt is is, is because it was a kid version of Robot Chicken. But to me, just because it was a kid version of Robot Chicken did, doesn't mean it can't have really good or funny skits because a lot of the uh, pop culture that was popular at the time Matt was on, which was back in 2010, 2011, 2012, Matt had some really hilarious skits. Oh, my gosh. So, personally, I would rank Mad as a solid B. I think it was good. I, I, I really like some of the skits on there, y'all. It was hilarious. It was really hilarious. There are some. If you can just go look it up on any source. If you can watch, go back and watch some of Mad's episodes and look at the pop culture that was popular at the time, Mad had some really hilarious ones. Even if it was a kid ro- version of Robot Chicken, I didn't care. Matt was really good. And Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart. Never watch this. The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. Now, this is another controversial opinion here. This one, I would also give a C, unfortunately. I wasn't, I couldn't get into Flapjack. Now, there are a lot of people who like this series. If y'all want to rank it as a B or a good, it's fine. I thought it was mediocre. Now, I do think the characters and the animation was pretty cool. But aside from that, I wasn't really a fan of the writing in this series. So, yeah, Flapjack gets mediocre for me. So, Megas XLR, oh yes. This series shouldn't have been short-lived, man, y'all. I would give it a solid A, personally. But... This is another excellent series that shouldn't have been so short. I mean, again, and we're going to get to Symbiotic Titan. Y'all wait till that. This was the Symbiotic Titan of this era, of this era, whereas Symbiotic Titan was a mega, mega XLR of that era. So, hey, but yes, Mega XLR gets a solid A. Mike Luganog. Gets this one gets a B. I actually this series had its ups and downs, but for me, I would give. I think it gets a solid B. I think it. I think it gets a solid B. Wasn't my favorite, but I would give it a B. So, the Mixels never watched the Moxie show. Never watched my gym partner's a monkey. Yeah, this series. And I know this series gets a lot of tr- gets trashed on a lot, but I still give it a C. Gets a mediocre. It's no different, not much different from Cow and Chicken or uh, Flapjack that I rank the C as well. So my chip partner's a monkey. There were some decent moments of this series, but it wasn't that good. But I think a C fits well for this one. Okay, KO. Never watch the Powerpuff Girls. The original Powerpuff Girls, this is Crack McCracken's first work on Cartoon Network. We talked about Fosters earlier on the list. OG Powerpuff Girls, solid A. I don't think it was an S, but I do think it gets a solid A because this was an excellent series. And the merchandise in stores back in the day was probably like the best of any Cartoon Network original series at the time this was on i think yeah i think i saw more powerpuff girls merchandise in the stores than like any other cn series back in the early 2000s so powerpuff girls was very influential influential and had 
it had the movie as well so um yeah but the movie i don't think it did well in theaters but it was good enough to have a movie in theaters but yeah uh Top of Girls had some really great episodes. The villains, the 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 roster of villains was huge, and everything, and uh, and it lasted for six seasons. It had really really great writing. I don't think the writing in the last two seasons were as good as the first four seasons, but nonetheless, it still gets a solid A. I think it's a great series, and of course, the Power of Girls twenty sixteen reboot. That one unfortunately gets a D. I think it was trash. I think it was trash. Yeah, this series was an abomination, and it showed multiple times. Uh, there's not much I need to say on it. The problem solvers D as well. <laughs> Terrible. Not not much to say on that. Regular show another now another S. I ranked Adventure Time as an A, I believe. So regular show gets an S. This was this was my favorite ser- Cartoon Network series of the early 20-teens era by far. Original series. This is my favorite one. Regular show. Mordecai and Rigby. So many amazing episodes of this. There's not much to say. Gets an S for me. Robotomy never watched. Samurai Jack S. Not only the 2001, the original time frame it was on from 2001 to 2004 but also the comeback it made on adult swim some years ago not too long ago but i think it was i don't remember what year it was but it was sometime in the late 20 teens samurai jack came back on adult swim so this samurai jack gets an s for me it had a really really heartbreaking ending but you know what i loved samurai jack i loved it. It, it it was awesome it was awesome this was one of the best series ever. Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated, another S tier. Best Scooby Doo series ever created. Best Scooby Doo series ever created. In fact, I do want to go ahead and rank some of the other Scooby Doo's, as you can see here. But uh, this is how I will rank the other Scooby Doo's as well. I mean, there's obviously, you know. Scooby-Doo has been the big part of Cartoon Network's history, but this was the one Warner Bros. Scooby-Doo that premiered new episodes on Cartoon Network that was really, really good. So, uh, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated gets an S. It was the greatest Scooby-Doo series ever created. It's It was so unique and did things different from other Scooby-Doo series that felt so repetitive over and over again. Now, I did did like the Scooby-Doo movies like Zombie Island and Witch's Ghost. Like, those late 90s Scooby-Doo movies, those direct-to-video movies, those were really good. But besides that, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, no Scooby-Doo series will ever beat that one, period. Hands down. It had such an intense ending too like but if you just watch this whole series you'll you'll understand why i rate this as an s i don't think any other scooby-doo series prior to mystery inc and afterwards can rank higher than this one and now we get to secret mount fort awesome and secret mount fort awesome yeah this one gets a d as well the problem the problem solvers and secret mountain fort awesome have a lot of similarities to each other both of these were trash to me, these were trash. The, 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 these get a, get a D. So, uh, yeah. The Secret Saturdays. This one gets an A. One of the most underrated series. This was one of the most underrated series of all time. And I'll be honest. Uh, I didn't watch Secret Saturdays as much as I wanted to. I wish I could have appreciated it more. When it was on, and I think the Secret Saturdays was on during the C and Real era, along with Chowder and Flapjack, Flapjack and Told Drama. So, again, the Secret Saturdays, I would, there was a lot of references to old cartoons on there. Like, it kind of gave me, I feel like the Secret Saturdays gave me sort of Johnny Quest vibes a little bit. But, um, yeah, the Secret Saturdays, it, it was really good. Like, it really didn't get the record it deserved in my opinion so gets an a and uh now we get to sheep in the big city okay yeah this one gets a b i did not watch 
this much. This was this was on during my very early years watching Cartoon Network because I started watching Cartoon Network in the early two thousands. So like two thousand, two thousand one. Those were my those were like my very early Cartoon Network watching years. That so um, like I did not watch much of it, but I did see a little bit of it again not too long ago. I don't think it was that good, but I still think it was decent. I think it gets a solid B, but I think when it comes to the B rank shows, I think it's one of the bottom ones. It's not far from C in my opinion, and I know some people may disagree with me on this. I don't think Sheep in the Big City was that gr- that good, but I still think it leans more towards B overall than C. But again, I did I did really. It's there's a reason why this this cartoon cartoon didn't get the recognition as others, and I can see why it wasn't as good as Courage, Powerpuff Girls, Eddie and Eddie, or even Time Squad either, which I'm about to get to. So um, yeah, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Uh, never watched this one. Now, obviously, this original series worked differently from others, but I never watched it, so I can't say much on it. Squirrel Boy. Yeah, 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 that's how I feel about this series. Yeah, that's how I feel about this series. Yeah, yeah, so Star Wars Clone Wars. Now, is Star Wars the Clone Wars on this list? If it is, I'll go ahead and rank it too. But the main focus is Star Wars Clone Wars. Uh, Yeah, this one for me gets a solid... A, I liked it. I liked it. I didn't watch it much episodes, but I did. But you know, any Star Wars series is going to be pretty good. Like, and honestly, I think this was a great series. D Clone Wars. I, on the other hand, yeah, I liked it too. I, I, I guess I'll rate these two the same. So, uh, yeah, Steven Universe. I, okay, so I did watch a little bit of Steven Universe, not much. I would rank it as a solid A. Now, this could also be ranked as an S by a lot of fans, which I respect. Uh, it's a great series. I didn't watch it enough for me to say it was an S, but Steven Universe, it does get it does get a solid A. But, hey, if y'all want to rank it as an S, that's fine. Because it's, it's one of the very top of the A's, honestly. It's a, it's a great series. So, um, Symbionic Titan up. Oh, here we go. Y'all know where I'm going to rank this. Solid S. It is a shame what happened to this series. And I think we all know by now. Why did Symbionic Titan last only like one, for 20 episodes? Not only it only lasted for one season. It only lasted for 20 episodes. That's blasphemous, man. It was like a toy line or something. Reason why that one fe- that one couldn't last another season. It's unforgivable, honestly. It's unforgivable. You can't you can't take it back. And I mean, look, it's been eleven years since Symbiote Titan aired. It's hard to believe. Such a mature series. It's one of the most mature series that's ever aired on Cartoon Network, and I loved it, every bit of it. It. Again, another series that did stuff different from the regular kitty cartoons on there. And, of course, it only lasted for 20 episodes. And to this day, it hurts. So, but it gets a solid S. The OG Teen Titans. Oh, boy. One of the all-time great series in the network's history. And, obviously, of the Warner Bros. series that premiered new episodes on Cartoon Network, this was by far the top, the cream of the crop. This was the top right here. But Teen Times, it gets an A. I wouldn't rank it as an S, but but this one gets a solid A for me. This one gets a solid A. I think, And but Teen Times was had excellent, excellent writing, you all. Excellent writing. Like, Words can't really describe how excellent the writing was in the original Teen Titans. It was great. But with that being said, it did have... I mean, there's not much negative to say about this. It was amazing. It was. It peaked during the city era of Cartoon Network. It was one of the top shows of that time period. 
it's a shame it only lasted three years. But with that being said, I think it gets a solid A. I don't think it gets an S. I don't think it's better than Justice League, but it's still. But again, solid A. It's a great series. Teen Titans Go now. Teen Titans Go. Yeah, this one gets a C. Now, here's the thing about Teen Titans Go. We know we are, we are aware of how big of an impact this made on the second half of the 20 teens decade for Cartoon Network. It was really what started the trend of all the reboots and stuff, which put Cartoon Network in a really bad point in recent years. But with that being said, if we're looking at how the series actually is, I would rank it as a C, a mediocre, because Teen Titans Go still had some fun. As a parody of a, of a serious series, it's still not that bad. It's not completely bad, but I would still rank it as mediocre. I don't think it's a D. I don't think it was, like, terrible. I don't think it was awful, but I would rank it as a, a mediocre. Thundercats 2011. Now, I did watch Thundercats 2011. This It's a shame it didn't last this long. S tier. S tier. Now we get to Time Squad. Now, I would also rank this one as a B as well. I think it's... A better B than Sheep in the Big City, but Time Squad was underrated. It was underrated. I don't remember much of this series because it's been so many years, but it did have its moments. And honestly, I would rank it as an A. Not not A. I'm sorry, B B. I meant B. Now we get to Total Drama Island. This is the only Canadian series I decided to put on this list because. Uh, this is the only Canadian series I decided to put on this list because Total Drama Island had had a big influence on Cartoon Network, a big, huge influence on the network's history. So I had to put it on this list. And honestly, Total Drama Island, the OG gets an S for me. The OG gets an S. Now, the only other, I'm not sure if, uh, as I'm reading this, I'm not sure if Total Drama Action and World Tour are on the tier list, but... Uh, We'll see if it is. I'll see if it is. But, uh, yeah, Toll Drama Action, I would rank as a B. And then Toll Drama World Tour, I would rank as an A. But any other Toll Drama series after those, I don't care about. I really don't care about those. So, but Toll Drama Island gets an S. The What this series did as a reality animated series, and again... This was what this came out in 2008. This is this was a rated PG show. This came out 2 years before Adventure Time and Regular Show on Cartoon Network. So like this is what kickstarted the PG cartoons being the norm on Cartoon Network and which allowed teens to enjoy animated shows on Cartoon Network again as well, not just kids. So like yet Toll Drama Island that was TV PG and then Adventure Time and Regular Show the original series ended up being PG as well. So, like, hey, Total Drama Island was a... I look at the influence of this series, the roster of characters, the comedy, and everything. It, it was an ex, it was one of the greatest series to ever air on Cartoon Network, in my opinion. OG Total Drama Island, solid S tier. I think it was excellent. Now, I know some people may not agree with me with ranking Total Drama Island this high, but to me, it was one of the best out there. It was one of the best. Transformers animated, I unfortunately never watched, so I can't say much on it, but I heard it was really good. Uncle Grandpa, this one gets to see. It, it, it's basically, it's no different than some of the other mediocre C list shows we ranked earlier. It's a decent Cartoon Network series that has a lot of gross humor in it, so it's no different than some of those other C shows that I've ranked in here. But it's like the modern version of, you know, Victor and Valentino never watched. We Bear Bears, I unfortunately never watched either. Yeah, Clarence and We Bear Bears, by the time those were on, I kind of started losing a little bit of interest. Mainly because of Teen Titans Go being marathon, so like I it distracted me from those being on, so I didn't get a chance to really watch those as much. What a cartoon! Now, here's the thing about what a cartoon. This show, 
honestly, it's really the same as the Cartoon Cartoon Show and Cartoon Cartoon... Well, not Cartoon Cartoon Top 5 or Cartoon Network Top 5, but what Cartoon and Cartoon and the Cartoon Cartoon Show are basically the same. So, I, 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 I don't know where to rate this, honestly, because it's just basically old shorts, classic shorts of shows that were like trying out before they became series but i don't know where i would rank this y'all so but did i watch it the answer is the answer is no i really didn't watch world cartoon because what i was really really young when world cartoon was still on cartoon network and i think by the time i really got to the cartoon network it changed into the cartoon cartoon show so yeah i can't really i can't really rank this one so because i really would have to watch all those it it really doesn't make sense for me to rank well cartoon because it's just different shorts on there so different shorts can have different rankings so it's really why would i rank what a cartoon so yeah and then there's whatever happened to robot jones unfortunately i did not watch this series either this was actually the one cartoon cartoon I know I didn't watch at all. So, uh, yeah, I didn't watch it enough to really know how it was. So, unfortunately, I can't rank whatever happened to Robot Jones. And the last but not least, Young Justice. What a way to end this uh, tier list for the Cartoon Network 30th anniversary. Young Justice gets an S. I'm thankful that this series came back on a uh, DC streaming service and HBO Max. Now, for this list, I'm only going by the first two seasons on Cartoon Network. So, seasons three and four of Young Justice will not be included in this opinion. So, my opinion on Young Justice based off this Cartoon Network 30th anniversary list is based off seasons one and two on Cartoon Network. And based off seasons one and two, this gets an S. This gets an S. Hey, we know the history of Young Justice, right? <laughs> if you don't know, just look it up. Like, again, very similar reasons to other show, other action shows at the time why it got can canceled too soon. It's a shame because these series were really, really excellent during the early 20 teens, Cartoon Network era. And the early 20 teens, like I said before, the early 2010s Cartoon Network era was so great. It was so amazing. It was... It, it's an it's a era that I wish I had appreciated more. And I, I wish I had watched more series at the time it was on. But hey. But anyways, what a way to end this list, y'all. So uh, anyways, that's going to be it. And uh, hey, we look back at Cartoon Network's 30 years. It's been around and... Like I said, going back to the Cartoon Network Studios and Warner Bros. merger, I hope that is the that's the decision that finally puts Cartoon Network back in the back on the map with some new amazing original series. Question for me is question for us is what will the next Dexter's Lab, what will the next Foster's Home, what will the next Adventure Time be? That's my question. That next groundbreaking series that kicks off a new era. And obviously, we're in the era where TV is on its way out and streaming is dominant now. Like, even even if Cartoon Network is just streaming only. Like, as long as it's a group of series, one or two series that puts the network back on the map, I'm down for it. Like, look, I'll give it a shot. Not these rebooted series that's put the network in the rut the last five years or more, but and I know there's some new ones like Infinity Train and some others that are really good. But hey, you know what? I'm thankful. Congratulations to Cartoon Network reaching 30 years. And look, there's not much I can say. My main era of Cartoon Network, I will always appreciate what the early 2000s powerhouse era did for me, the mid 2000s city era, and the early 2010s check it era. Those are the three main eras of Cartoon Network that I really like. So, 
again, those were the best eras for me. And I, and maybe one day there will be another era that's close to those, either of those three eras again for me. So anyways, 30 years, 2WO96. And oh, wait, I do want to say this is probably going to be the very last Cartoon Network video I ever make on YouTube. Cause you know, I did, I used to make powerhouse videos in the past and everything, but I stopped doing that five years ago. So, but look out because in April, 2023, six months from now will be the 25th anniversary of Toon Disney, which has been defunct since 2009. But Hey, you know what? 25th anniversary of a no longer existing network. I might do a tier list on Toon Disney shows in April 2023. So look out for that. I might do a tier list on Toon Disney shows for the 25th anniversary. But anyways, I'm out y'all.